Welcome to the start of a new MakeCode Arcade tutorial series where we're going to look at making more of a maze style game. We're going to start by teaching you how to have your sprite look and face the direction that you're moving. So starting with just the basics that we have in all of our games, we've made our player sprite and we've told our game that we can move our sprite with our keys. This is, looks like what we're all used to here, but when I move to the left and the right, my character does not face left or right. In fact, it's only facing down in this image that I've picked for it. So we're going to look at changing the direction when we move. And it's a good idea to just have a quick think about what your problem is that you're looking to solve and seeing if you can understand what might be involved and perhaps even say your problem out loud to yourself to help you understand it. So for example, what we're looking to do here is to have our sprite face in the direction that we're moving. Well, what does that involve? What I'm really asking is I would like the image for my sprite to look like it's facing left when I push the left button to make my character move to the left. So all then we're really doing is we're looking at triggering some events for when particular buttons are pushed. So let's start with that. We're going to drag all four of them out to begin with because we want to work with up, down, left, and right. And then we need to make sure that our events are set accordingly. So on up button pressed, on down button pressed, on left button pressed, and on right button pressed. So now we've got the events for what happens when we use our directional keys. And what is it that we're trying to do? We're trying to change the image of our sprite to look like it's facing in the right direction. So we're going to go to the sprites category. And the block that we're looking for is actually almost right down to the bottom. It's the second to last one, actually. And it says, set my sprite image to. So let's put one of these in every one of our events. Let me scroll down. You can do it this way. But remember, we have to change it from my sprite to what it is that we're actually changing. I've called mine princess. Princess, and you can actually remember, remember we can actually duplicate. However you go about this, we just want to make sure that in each of our directional button events, we have a set our my sprite image too. And then it's just as simple as picking the right image. I got mine from the gallery, so we'll go back to the gallery and we'll go, this one's facing left, done. Let's do when it's facing up, we'll change the image, gallery, we'll find the one that we're looking for and we'll pick this one. And we're gonna do that now for all four directions. so that when we move around and we push our buttons to move, we're also pushing our buttons to change our picture. We're gonna move around our screen now and our little princess is facing in the right direction. We have our sprite facing in the direction we are moving and now to extend on that, we might want to have it so that when our character shoots an arrow or some kind of projectile, that it actually moves in the direction that we're facing. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use a variable to keep track of the direction that we're facing. So to start, we're going to make a new variable. And we're going to give it a name. This could be character direction, direction facing. We'll just use direction in this video so that we know that this is going to track the direction that we're facing. And then we're going to initialize this, which means we're going to put it in our on start and just make it exist but we'll have a look here. By default, it wants a number. Set direction to zero. So just to show you this tip, if we click on advanced, and then we click on text, the very first one is just a little text bubble. And we can replace a number bubble with a text bubble just by dragging it in like that. And now we can use just a word instead of a number to describe our direction. I've put down in on start because this is the picture that we've picked for when the game starts. 
but let's have a look at actually updating that while we're playing the game. So we have our variable called direction and we need to set it to our direction when we push our buttons and change the image. Now remember, we want it to be text. Advanced, text, and the little text bubble is here. And remember, we can always duplicate it. Right click, duplicate, the text bubble actually stays in there. So again, go about this in the most comfortable way for you and just make sure that we have in all of our direction events an update to our direction variable. Because then all we need to do after that is actually type it in. So we've got when up is pressed, our direction is up. When left is pressed, our direction is left. And we're going to do that for all four. We can then use this information in our game to help us figure out what direction our projectiles can go in. Let's look at how we do that. Let's have it so that when we push our A button, we shoot out a projectile. So on A button pressed, and sprites, Remember, we want to make a projectile from another sprite, from our character sprite in particular. So from our princess. But now this is just going to shoot out at the velocity of 50-50 that the default block says. But we've now got a whole bunch of conditions to consider to figure out what direction it's facing in. So for example, if we are facing left, then we need a velocity that shoots our projectile in the left direction. There's a very important word there that I've been using, and that is if. That's under logic, conditionals. So it checks if a condition is true or false. So if me facing in the up direction is true, run this block of code. So we can click plus here and it becomes an else. If this is true, it's this event here. Elsewise, otherwise, else, if it's anything other than true, it runs this. But we can actually keep pressing plus. And now we've got, if this is true, run this event. Otherwise, if this part's true, run this. Or if neither of these are true, do this. And we can press plus another time. We can actually create an if-then condition exactly for our needs. We've got four directions to consider. I'm going to push the plus one more time. And now we have four specific events here. And then the extra one on the end, which we don't need to worry about. So if we minus that, we have an if statement that we can say if up if left, right, down, etc. We can use these four events for all four of our directions. And how do we compare that? Well, under logic, we've got our conditionals, but then we've got our comparisons. We can see that we've got the drop-down menu here, so it doesn't necessarily matter which one of these we pull over, other than take note that we're comparing numbers here and we're comparing text here. So for us comparing our directions, we are comparing the name of the direction that we've given it, which is in text. So we're dragging this one across. Now the equals, less than, greater than, that's all in our drop down menu that we see here when we've got the little triangle. And we want to check what our direction equals. So we're going to stick with equals. And let's say in our variable, we've got one called direction, so if our direction is equal to up, then run this event. And then we can start duplicating this. If I put my mouse over 
this hexagonal shape here, there's a white outline around it. When I right click duplicate, it'll duplicate what has the outline around it. So we only want to duplicate the bit in the middle. We can just put it in our slots here and then start working on them. So we want to do the four directions which are up, down, left and right. And something I want you to take note of is when we are setting our variable, I've chosen to use all capital letters so that it stands out to me. If I've written it here in all capital letters, then I need to make sure that it's always in all capital letters over here because it's checking if the word is the same. So let's have a look. What happens if we're facing up and we push the A button? Well, then we're going to make a projectile. And in fact, we're going to make a projectile regardless of what direction we're facing. So again, we can just fill up all of these with our projectiles. We then can edit them. It might have been a good idea to pick the picture before duplicating, but just to be really quick, all I'm going to do is just have a really simple, maybe like a very simple representation of a fireball. Nothing major. We can draw it or again, we can duplicate it. Put the mouse over the picture, click and hold and drag the picture out and you can drop it into where we want to go. Now we need to work specifically with our velocities. Remember, if we're facing up, our velocity needs to represent an up direction. If we're facing left and we push our A button, our velocity needs to represent a left direction. And this is where we start taking into account that X is always left and right, and Y is always up and down. So let's start with just that simple theory there. X is always left and right. So when we're working with up and down, we're not moving left and right at all. Let's set those to zero. And so that means when we're facing left or right and we want our projectile to shoot only left or right, the projectile isn't gonna be moving up and down at all. We can set the Y for those ones to zero. Let's have a look then which of those directions are working and which ones aren't. So if we're facing down at the moment and I shoot, a little fireball projectile goes down. If I'm facing up and I shoot, well, it still goes down. What about left? It actually goes right instead. So if I'm facing right, then it's the right direction. So let's just have another quick look. Down doesn't need fixing. Right doesn't need fixing. So when we go back to our code, let's just look at up and left because they're going in the opposite direction that they should, which will actually help us figure out the answer. Up and down have the same velocity. They're actually both set to 50, so they're both being told to do the same thing. We know that down is working, so up is the one that we have to fix, and remember we want it to move in the opposite direction. So we're gonna make it, instead of a positive 50, a negative 50. Let's apply that same theory to left and right. We knew that right was working, and we only had to flip it to move the opposite direction when we were facing left. Well, left at the moment is set to a positive number just like right is, and we want it to move in the opposite direction. Let's go minus 50 here. Let's test our game and see if our fireballs are moving in the right direction. Down, up, left, and right. 